good things take time. Uh, welcome to Confidently Insecure, podcast where we're absolutely sure we don't know everything. I am your host, Kels. Oh. <gasps> See, wow. I, all of a sudden, now that I can see myself, I'm like, I am Kelsey. I'm Kelsey. Oh, my God. I'm Zach Noe Towers. And I'm Kelsey Dara. And don't fucking adjust your screens. <laughs> but finally. I mean, look how good. I mean, no, but this is a problem now is we're only going to be looking no, at ourselves. No. So we have to be trained professionals. I'm looking at my gorgeous co-host. It's a mirror. <laughs> Um, if you're watching this on youtube.com slash Kelsey Dara and hopefully hearing it too on your audio, wherever podcasts are listened to, it only took me seven fucking years, but Zach finally today said he held me up against the wall with a knife to my I throat, did. a knife to her throat and to her pussy. And I kind of liked it. And then he was like, if you don't fucking get some nice fucking cameras, two cameras set up with, with nice lighting and <laughs> fucking quality audio for this podcast i'm quitting that is exactly <laughs> kelsey is infamously the biggest liar i've ever met but that <laughs> was accurate um you guys we're using like fancy cameras we, we they're cannons baby ever heard of it yeah and uh hopefully the audio quality sounds a touch a smidge better Sure. I didn't think the audio was going to go down at all. Mm, no, well, it shouldn't have gone down. Okay. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It could only go Wait, up. Was it? I mean, I've had trouble in the past. Oh, I know you've had audio issues in yeah. general. Mm -hmm. But I thought our episodes were always good. Well, that's because you're an optimist. Yeah. Um, I am proud of us. We did I'm this proud of you. all by ourselves. Make no mistake. I literally sat here. Yeah. And sometimes I would like go like get something for Kelsey, but she did the, in <laughs> and she started at 9 30 AM. It is midnight. It's as literally 3 30. <laughs> I mean, wild, but you, but I knew, I also knew that once you started today, like we went to Best Buy, bitch. At 10 AM. We were like the only motherfuckers yes. in there. Shout out to Sergio. Oh my the God. The man with the plan. Really helped us Help out. Help me pick out cords. And we got it all set up. And you know what? That's that's on body doubling. That is on body doubling. Because all I needed was your presence and your fucking snotty attitude about how shitty the quality was. <laughs> okay, now I have to be, like, to be I clear. I didn't know, Zach. <laughs> if anything, I've been the one that's like, we got to stop using a potato and like some foil <laughs> to shoot the podcast. I'm so excited. I, I, I honestly like, I can just feel it all coming now. I can, f I feel myself coming. I feel people coming to our live show. I feel people coming to run to youtube.com slash Kelsey Dare to watch this new crispy quality TV. Yes. But we're doing our live show soon. Oh my gosh. February ba -ba 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 6th in New York City at the New York City Winery. Mm -hmm. February 7th in Philly at the mm -hmm. Philadelphia City Winery. Mm -hmm. These are big venues, people, and we are going to pack it out. We have no choice but to sell out. If we don't sell out, they cut our balls off. Yep. We get finally castrated. They cut my balls off and they make Chelsea. Oh my God, you're right. The cameras are fucking me up. Oh my fucking <laughs> God. Anyway. No, no, Kelsey, we're not going to blow up. Chelsea. <laughs> we're not going to pretend that I didn't just fucking Kelsey have it. Chelsea is going to eat my testicles. That's all I was saying. I'm going to feed your testicles to yourself after just calling me Chelsea. Oh my God. It's because you're looking at yourself. You could rock. Chelsea. Oh, I could. Chelsea could be like a nasty alter ego of mine. Wait, who is a dirtier girl? Chelsea or Kelsey? Well, when I think of Chelsea, I think of Chelsea Handler, my Lord, Savior, <gasps> Jesus Christ. Oh. So I think of her being like a little sassier. A little... Isn't it also Chelsea Clinton? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, those are kind of like the polar opposites of Chelsea's. I don't know. I feel like Chelsea Clinton's probably a little freak nasty, you don't you think? think? Oh, she's got to be with that big old <gasps> mouth. <laughs> Um, Chaos on Kisses Tour. We're so excited. We're going to have live games. We are going to have audience interaction. There are meet and greet tickies yes. where you can hug and kiss us as long as you don't have COVID. Um, we'll have giveaways. We're giving away that thing you said last week where you were like, if you want to donate a ticket, people are donating people tickies. People are donating tickies. My sister donated two. Uh, believe it or not, the athlete donated one. He was like, I'll, I'll, I'll throw one in. 
Okay, that is not what he sounds like. How dare you? How dare you muddy his reputation? Zach's in love. I am. Zach's in love. I I can't even I can't even play it cool. I I would love to see what I look like around him. You act completely the same. Okay, good. Do you feel something inside? I mean, of course. I mean, I want you out of the picture. Ah! (laughs) (laughs) I want it to just be him and me. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, Very kind of him. So if you want the athletes, Tiki, you could be there. And we're going to, we we are definitely going to pick you out of the crowd when we see you uh, as our Tiki winner. Uh, Please. Go to Confidently Pod on the IG. Slide into our little DMs. Let us know you want a Tiki, and we're going to have stuff to post about, and you might win. Yeah, help us promo, and you get that fucking ticket. Baby, you got any Bong. housekeeping? Um, Do I have housekeeping? I have my other podcast, After Hours. That live show is May 2nd for the Netflix is a Joke Festival. Love. I guess that's kind of housekeepy. Guys, fucking Netflix. Yeah, you work for Netflix. I know. Isn't that, Netflix gave me a pudding in the month club from Be- Magnolia Bakery. <laughs> Sorry, you're gonna say that slower. Netflix gave me a pudding of the month club. Okay, because when you said it the first time, it sounds as insane as when you said it the okay, second yeah, one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I, did I say something weird? <laughs> no, I get pudding every month from Magnolia Bakery, and it's from Netflix. From Netflix, it's the best. It's the sweetest gift. And they gave it to you why? Christmas or the holidays? Good, good cover up. Um, wait, why do you think they gave it to me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any like fucking conspiracy theories. Okay. I just didn't know when it started. I was like, did they give it to you for your show? Did I got they my go- first order yesterday. It was six pints of pudding. That dairy is going to come right out of my body. You don't do dairy. I don't eat dairy. Um, wait, other housekeeping things. Do you have anything juicy? Yeah. What? I farted finally in front <gasps> of the athlete. God, your housekeeping is so much better than mine. No, it's not. You yeah. literally just I talked, talked about-, about pudding. <laughs> Um, I told because you live with someone. Yeah, we've lived together three and a half months. Yeah, it feels like we've been like with each other for a year because you're all day every day around this person. And I know my tum tum hurts holding in farts. Of course, around this it's unnatural. No, it's God doesn't want that. And I was like, how long? I wonder how long do y'all wait to fart in front of someone? you're seeing i've never gotten to that place you dated someone for like a year didn't you yeah but i still didn't i didn't fire in front of them after a year yeah because we don't i my year is different than other people's year why what are you fucking from I'm the not, future I, I had two sleepovers in that year with them oh yeah that's a little crazy. so i go home and i fucking empty the chamber <laughs> you blast off to outer space into every my, night into my bed sheets <laughs> I fart so much in my bedroom. Oh. oh, there's nothing like just an echoey, rumbly, long fart. And especially because you live alone. Yes. You can do whatever you want. Yes. Like, see, I leave I'm the door open. running upstairs after I say goodnight and I'm, I'm, I'm crouching a little bit and opening up my own butt cheeks. Oh my God. <laughs> to let the air out. <laughs> this is gonna be such a good tiktok to me like how long you wait to fart in front of your so or just a person you're seeing no you see i think farts are for friends farts are for friends, friends. who do stuff together <laughs> is that a song from spongebob oh but it's f is for friends who do stuff oh. together you is everyone's singing it now in their cars farts are for friends i don't think farts are for lovers I honestly, honestly, Ever? how do you know? How do you exist? See, this is the thing. I have a theory that the only way I'm going to be in a long term relationship is if we stay separate like that, like no farting. And you live at your house. Yes. I live at mine. We never need to move in. Yes. You know what's crazy? I know a lot of gay men that are doing that. It's and it's queer the future. women. It's the future. And some lesbos. We always do. We do stuff first. We we have to do like the market research. We have to get it like in tip top shape. We have to have all the questions ready with answers before we let <laughs> the straights in. Straights in. Yeah, I hear that. I have um, what's it called? Codependency or oh whatever. My God. Yeah, it's worse than that. But yeah. <laughs> so I would like to be around people. I do like having a body double around the house, or else I'd never get anything done. 
That is another thing. That's, That's another episode. Oh, codependency? Yeah. yeah. Surely you've covered that a million times. I don't know that I've done an outright codependency episode. Confidants, correct me if I'm wrong. Huh. Huh. Hey, while we're on it, you got any... Because I got one. No, I am in general kind of like irked by TikTok because every other video is like either a TikTok shop, like eligible for commission, or it's like an ad. And I'm so annoyed. Okay, comment below one how long you wait until you fart in front of someone you're dating. (laughs) Two, has your TikTok just like switched to an ad fucking lunatic just all day? And then if you don't, it's like, it's like add TikTok shop video, add TikTok shop video. Yes. I mean, if you don't like that video, you're just swiping yes. 12 times in a row. And they be get they be getting me with those those ads because they play it like it's a regular video yeah. and then it waits a couple seconds and then the little ad comes up and I'm like, yes. oh, you fucks and you know who else be doing this? Ooh. I discovered this yesterday. Oh, dude, this is gonna piss this, this gonna piss you off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm drinking a Celsius at 3.30 p.m. because I have a birthday party to go to tonight. Um, What's that saying from the Rihanna song that's like, first it'll... Oh, no, no, that's... What's your name? No. Oh, no, no. No, that's not it. Um, Where it's like, the tru- first the truth will set you free, but then it'll piss you off. Oh. That's this. Fucking last night, I went to go YouTube a mountain that I'm trying to go ski at privilege i understand and i see a gorgeous thumbnail with like a beautiful video title and i'm like let me click on this bitch tell me why a whole new window opened (gasps) and went to the the website of a ski resort you are kidding it looked like a video it looked like a video and i said i looked over at the athlete and i said look at this and he was like yo no way i was like that was fuck it was literally clickbait it was like a gorgeous thumbnail looked like a video everything had like the description and everything and i went that's fucked up, but smart paying premium price to be at the top. Guess what? what? I went, let me go to the next. Let me let me scroll down and find an actual video. It was like the first one. Then there were two regular videos. And then it was the third <gasps> one, too. A completely different ad. And I went, who thought this was okay? And why did we not get an announcement? It can't be okay. It was... I did not ask to be da- taken to another website. That's like hiding... Mm-hmm. It's hiding a button. Mm-hmm. Because the whole thing is actually just Mm -hmm. all clickable. Mm -hmm. And it takes you away from YouTube. Mm -hmm. That YouTube... Shame Fuck on you. you. Wait, this gets demonetized immediately. What am I kidding? Most of our shit gets demonetized. Hey, speaking of getting demonetized, if you want a confident <laughs> bottom sticker, uh, Venmo us, whatever you think it's worth, plus yeah. one twenty nine or two twenty nine for shipping if you're international. We haven't remembered yet what it is. Yeah. But at Kelsey Dara, if you want a sticker and in the comment, include your address, please. So we know who to send it to. Yeah. Um, My TikTok. Oh, yeah. This will also piss you off. Oh, no. So I was going to tell you in person IRL when we went to Best Buy this afternoon, this morning. <laughs> mm. And then I thought, I better tell him this live. So I learned on TTTT that, you know, when you're at a store, like a big corporation like CVS or Target. Best Buy or whatever, Target, and when you're paying, it asks, do you want to round up? I know this. To donate Don't do it. to Ju- St. Jude's. Because then they take uh-huh. the tax credit or whatever. And it's like, oh, it's going to charity. Yes, it does go to charity. However, you are helping that corporation write a fat ass tax write off at the yep. end of the year. So here's the thing. I'm not saying don't donate. No, don't donate. I'm saying it's better for you to donate directly yeah. yourself and get the fucking tax write off yourself. I gleefully hit no thank you. Feed hungry children. No, thank you. I honestly, I do it. And then I go, do you know what this actually is to the worker? <laughs> do you inform them? I tell them. And most of them are like, I don't care. Couldn't care less. Couldn't be like, there's a woman shitting in aisle four right now. <laughs> I do not care if you don't donate 37 cents to charity. Yeah. Um, but I thought that was interesting. See, these are the things that they should have taught us in school, but I'm learning here on Tickety Talk Clock app. Good. I actually don't understand what school is for at this point. Can I tell you some of my friends who have children, they're like, we're purposefully not putting anything into a college run- fund because we like don't think it'll matter by the time they're... Because like the world's going to end. Not the world's going to end. That's real, real bleak because then why have kids? But that like college is going to be replaced by something essentially. Yeah. How to maintain robots class. 
uh, upkeep and coding 101 through YouTube in your living room on your iPad, kids. Program it into your smart ring, which is attached to your blood vessels. I'm telling you, chip me. I don't care. Sign me up. Um, today we're talking about reality television. More specifically, the dark side. The dangers of. Before we get to it, what's your favorite reality TV show? Oh, my, you hate them. I don't hate them. This is guys, hear it here first. I'm. Sh- I wish Zach would come over and just binge Netflix shows with me. He hates them. I don't hate them. I don't. I. No, I would get sucked in. I don't feel particularly drawn to them mm-hmm. unless they're like talent based. So in college, me and my friends used to watch Project Runway together. Okay. That was like really fun to see them whip. Drag Race has been at the top Love. of that for me. Um, so it sounds like you like competition reality shows. Well, like ones that there's like actual like talent talent involved right not people in a house falling in love or not and that or like actually even i would take that over like oh my god i'm gonna get dragged housewives we're never seen an episode okay it's like manufactured drama yeah we might get some hate for that but i i too never understood the housewife oh it's huge stuff it we are literally in the mic we are wrong but statistically speaking we're wrong yeah i guess there's a element of uh cognitive dissonance of like let me just not turn the brain off. Turn the yeah, turn of dissonance and like wishful thinking of like these people are wealthy and hot typically, and sure, let me live in their in, bubble. Yes, okay, I I totally get that. Maybe because we live in LA and I actually see and them meet up and, close yeah, and how like, plasticky they are. Yeah, or just like you know, I've been in those houses like cool, yeah, but like yeah. ultimately I'm not like that yeah. gross. I would say I do love like a competition reality show a hundo percento. Um, but also recently I've, I'm such a sucker for those social experiment ones. Oh, oh, oh. Nine day fiance. The squid game challenge. Is that one of them? Oh my God. The squid I games. Yeah. I ate that up. I, num, 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 num. I would be on that in a heartbeat, by the way. Oh, you would. This is the thing. You'd be a threat. You'd be kicked off. I'd be too loud. Yeah. Well, <sighs> I'd play it. I'd play Not it cool. in a bad way. I'd make a lot of friends. Yes. I tend to make friends. <gasps> I want you. Dude. I Have want- you applied? I should. Yo, start a hashtag. <laughs> Get me on that squid game, baby. Squid Kelsey. Hashtag squid, squid Kelsey. Kelsey. Sounds delicious. Kelsey squid. Um, But when we come back, we're going to learn about <gasps> the dangers <gasps> of reality television. Uh-huh. In case you were wondering, my favorite reality television Oh, sorry, show. I didn't ask. Um, I love a good home makeover show. Oh my, you're right. I do. You're right. Do, do they even still move that bus? Do, if they still move that bus, I don't know because I don't have cable anymore. Oh. And I feel like that was such a cable show. Sure. If you move that bus, hit us up. Yeah, let us know if you move that bus. Okay, Zachary, hit us. Oh my gosh. Take it away. I mean, the thing is, we were on a reality TV show, first of all. I forget every single day that we were on two seasons of, of television, 40-something episodes. It's so funny, too, when, I, e. when <laughs> somebody would be like, you look so familiar. I'm like, oh, do you watch, like, reality TV? I was on, like, a dating show. And immediately, like, oh, they think I'm a dater. Oh, they yep. think I was one of, like, a contestant. Or yep. something. Like, no, no, no. I was making fun yes. of people trying to find love. If for some reason you haven't watched, you can watch it streaming on Hulu. It's called Dating No Filter. And it was an e-television show. And that's where Zach and I met. And when I say it's some of our funniest bits and bobs. I just love that we met and like day one, we were off to the races. We were a producer's dream. I I didn't realize it at the time either. Yeah. They could have really been like, God, these two fucking have nothing to say to each other. Or and, like, but no, no, they were like, oh, we don't even have to worry about We're them. like, we got this. Yeah. All right. So. The first dark side of reality TV I want to talk about are manipulative producers. Mm. Because I don't know how common knowledge this is. It's is it, is it? if you don't know, they, there are story producers and there are people like I have a friend who's working on The Bachelor, had been working on The Bachelor, and he literally has a joke about it being like, if I'm not making someone cry, I'm not doing my job. <laughs> And like literally on the credits, they'll have written by like writers, of, writer credit. I yeah. don't remember uh, w- uh, my friend was like a co-producer on like the Bad Girls Club and they couldn't oh, get iconic this the last season approved <gasps> because in the last script they had her starting a fire 
in the house in the hills. What? And they're like, we can't do, we can't green light this. But it was like a scripted moment. It, there did, was going to be a fire in the house in the hills. That's insane. Yeah. And like, they were like, we can't do that. Boo. That would be the next iteration of the Bad Girls Club. Like, that's how chaotic that show was. Shout out to my sister. We used to binge. Also, Bad have Girls you Club. watched any of the villains or villains? No. It's on E. So it's behind a paywall. Boo. Our, our, our father, mother company or whatever. But it's like all the TV villains <gasps> on one show. Oh, my God. Anyway, I've Messy. seen some clips. It looks amazing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so all these scenes are carefully edited to create conflicts and drama with participants being guided to act in certain ways. Emotional breakdowns, confrontations, and shocking twists are often engineered to boost ratings, disregarding the genuine emotions and well-being of a contestant. Mm. Paula Goodspeed was a contestant on American Idol mm -hmm. who was reportedly infatuated with, the, with Paula Abdul. Uh -huh. um, she died by suicide <gasps> a few doors down from Paula Abdul's home in 2008. When she was on the show during season five in 2006, she had been ridiculed and flatly rejected by the judge during her judges during her audition. Oh, Lord. Abdul later told the hosts of The View that um, Goodspeed had been stalking her for 17 <gasps> years, and she pleaded with Cowell and the producers not to let Goodspeed audition. They did for the entertainment value. Oh, my God. It's fun for them to cause her me stress, Paula stress. Um, this was something that would make good television. So it's like, Whoa. they were presented with like, oh, it's Paula's stalker. Holy And she's like, fuck. please don't. They did. They ridiculed her. She killed herself. Holy shit. I know. Was Do you have anything in there about Unreal? No. If you guys haven't watched, there's a scripted television show. I think it was on Lifetime. I think it was too. And it was, it was, it slapped. It was I, good. I've heard nothing but good things. Oh, you haven't watched it? No. Oh, Zach, you would love. Really? Yeah. Because it's just so, it's a, it's a, it's a scripted show about reality television. Okay. So it's a showrunner of a bachelor type show. And she's like the, you know, the puppet the, master yes, behind yes, the yes. scenes. And like, she has to do all this crazy fucked up shit. To, she's, oh, she's like, like planting drama yes dude and like the stuff you see you're like this is crazy then you find out that the writer and creator of that show was a showrunner on the bachelor oh my god yeah, I, it's years ago that this was out but highly recommend and it had like two seasons i think i think so yeah i think my friend actually wrote on it it was really good um okay let's talk about the psychological toll on contestants oh boy Reality TV participants face immense pressure to perform, leading to high-stress environments that can have lasting psychological effects. Mm -hmm. Isolation, sleep deprivation, and constant surveillance can take a toll on contestants' mental health. Mm. Addi additionally, the public scrutiny and social media backlash that follows their appearance on the Oof. show can lead to anxiety, depression, and even post-traumatic stress disorder for some. Ooh. Because these people go from being unknown, yep. living normal lives, to so having rushed. millions of followers sometimes, and millions in brand deals or opportunities. They don't know how to even digest it. I'm glad you brought this up because a uh, reason why I wanted to do an episode on this too was because of how much I love Love is Blind mm. and then seeing what all the contestants banning together after I think it was like the third or fourth season, they tried to sue the production company about being like, the way they isolate us and keep us in that house, like no windows, no fresh air. And then one woman this past season, which I don't know if it's aired yet, is trying to sue them for putting her in a relationship with an abusive person. Yeah. There's there. I saw a bunch of stuff about how producers, um, NBC was served with this like big suit with like a couple different lawyers. They didn't name any of the people, although one of the lawyers does represent Bethany Frankel. Oh. So it could be in that line. But how uh, people like sexual abuse oh, is like swept under the rug. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Um, conditions like you said, sleep deprivation, uh, ab abundance of alcohol. Oh my god! Um, no, the the pro the mental aptitude test that they have to take before is like non-existent or like very they easy. They used to they used to be more thorough. They used of to course. be like you could not be on any kinds of medications. You have you a doctor's never, note. Yeah, and like. It, you now they're like yeah if you have like anxiety disorder we want you and their contracts are so fucking locked 
airtight, oh sealed. Well, and they have the power of yeah. network television behind yeah. it. So oh, the other thing they do is they'll intimidate people mm. into not coming forward. Uh huh. Because they'll be like, if you do this, like, we'll ruin you and we'll sue you for the entire production, yeah. uh, which those productions cost millions of dollars. And so when you're somebody who's never been in the entertainment industry and you get threatened like that, you're like, uh, well, of course. And, you know, it ruins people's fucking lives. And also you have zero control over the edit which a lot of people don't realize is like oh, of course they are clipping they are making every single character you see on reality television the way they want you to see of, them oh one thousand percent uh there was a big problem with the jersey shore i guess because the contracts they signed were so like all-inclusive mm -hmm. that they had no say in any way that they were like represented crazy yeah i met snooki she was on i have her phone number oh yeah that's weird and if you buy tickets to the show, we'll give it to you. <laughs> At confidentlyinsecure.com. Um, Gerald Babin, B-A-B-I-N, but okay. he's French, a contestant on Colanta, the French version of Survivor, mm. died during Yay. filming. Babin, Babin, I feel silly, suffered cardiac, I'm gonna call him Gerald. Gerald suffered cardiac arrest after jumping off a boat and participating in tug of war challenge. As a result, oh. production was stopped and the show was canceled for twenty third for the season thirteen. Oh my god, for the twenty thirteen season. Just Jeez. one week later, the a doctor, Thierry Costa, who had worked on the show and performed emergency care on uh, Gerald, died by suicide. <gasps> In a suicide note, uh, Costa said that his name had been sullied by the media concerning the death of Gerald. Oh my god! So like, not only. <laughs> Did this contestant die? The season got um, like postponed or whatever. And then the public ridiculed the doctor associated and then he killed himself. Wait, he was a contestant also? No, no, no. He was the doctor working on the show. Oh, so like he the param to that him paramedic in that episode or whatever. Oh my God. Uh huh. She's Louise. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, I remember I was on what's the big balls one? Wipe, Wipe out. out. I, I was on white. You just walked away too, didn't you? Yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to even talk about this. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> I was on this episode because my best friend begged me to do it for his 40th birthday. And I was like, fucking fine. If this is your present, then, then I'll do it. Let's do it. We got up at like 530 in the morning, drive out to the fucking valley after auditioning. We get there. You sit around for hours. They tell you, OK, you get one shot at doing this thing. And it's the one where you jump on all the stuff in the obstacle course. And we see the first kids go out. It's a set of br twin brothers who were like very in shape. Like they were like parkour professionals. Yeah. They come back and like only one is there. And we're like, where's the other one? He's like beat up. And he's like, oh, he's still in the shower throwing up. And we're like, what? what? And so my alarm bells are kind of going off. Like these two really in shape kiddos coming back cray cray and uh i looked it up and a cont a person died doing the big ball thing and it was a guy who was older and i guess they said it was like a cardiac arrest thing but you assume the risk and it was just the season before what we had <gasps> done and i was like ain't nobody fucking told you this in the casting oh my god they would never never they would never and, and they also hide it they sweep it under the rug. It should be that rule where, like, you're selling a house and you're like, just an FYI, the family was murdered. Who was <laughs> here last? And I think, too, like, you you also don't report on these things because other networks aren't going to report on it either because, like, they all have their subset of reality of television. So they're like, okay, you report on our story. Wait till we tell what happens during on Big Brother. Your story. Mm. This is such a side note. Did you know that no one, like, dies at Disney World? They Dude, take the body off I the premises. That. And they try to, they perform life-saving measures <gasps> until, until they, they get, get off. off. And then they're like, well, all right, he's we passed the parking lot. Holy shit. I know. I'm not surprised. We should do a whole episode on the secrets of Disney. We will get murdered probably, Illuminati style, but I'm I very curious it. about it. Honestly, to be stalked and killed by Mickey Mouse, <laughs> a dream. It'd be interesting for the podcast. <laughs> um, This is, okay, uh... Uh, the uh, late Love Island host Caroline Flack killed herself because she knew she would be prosecuted for assaulting her boyfriend, <gasps> Louis Burton, and was terrified of the pub uh, publicity the court case would bring. Oh, no. She lost her job of five years and was going to be charged. Her mom speculated that... Wait, the, she was going to be charged? Um, With, like, 
uh, abuse. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, her mom thought that they were trying to make uh, an example of her. Oh yeah. Like, th this is a public figure. Just so you know, we can we can charge you with these things. And that's the thing is, like, you take regular people who you take their worst moments of their lives. Granted, if it's illegal or you know a crime, you're black. Like everyone has had one of those moments that they're like. Ooh, if people saw this and they're manufacturing these yeah. all day, every day with the edits, with the edits, which is why any of my friends who work in reality TV in LA fucking hate it, but they can't walk away because it money. pays so well. Yeah. And it's just so it's like the easiest green light, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, also, if you guys get really good at looking at uh, reality shows, you'll see they use like the same reaction uh -huh. multiple times mm -hmm. sometimes or like something is not in place because it's the second time they've done the scene. Yes. And, or you'll the audio will sound different and it's because they do what's called ADR, which is where they have the person record the, the, the audio clip after the fact. So literally they'll just cut to another shot and then place in the audio of a person saying something so it looks like they said it in that moment and then cut right back to them so it looks like they just finished yep. that sentence it's crazy yeah um okay and then i just have some wild examples of dark sided reality tv what were the other ones things that you just read because that was pretty fucking dark. oh yeah i know i know <laughs> these are kind of just like i'm not gonna say they're not fun okay but they're just wild let's hear them okay a show called under wild skies on nbc sports network funded by the NRA. Oh no. Was canceled after the show's host Tony Macris shot an elephant in the face <gasps> and compared his critics to Adolf Hitler. Okay, I'm going to need to break this down. First of all, what was this show called? Under Wild Skies on NBC Sports Network. So was it a hunting show? Probably. And they were like You know it's not okay to ask me follow-up questions. <laughs> Don't, Don't Google, Google it. it. I'm sorry, but like anyone who kills innocent animals out in the wild like that it's shot not cool. an elephant in the face mm -mm. Mm -mm. i don't like that no so you lost me at funded by the nra that's the only good part of this yeah. is that it was like that show got shut down yeah got shot down am i right oh <laughs> um during the filming of another french reality show dropped mm -hmm. in 2015 two helicopters collided <gasps> killing 10 people oh my lord um pegged as an adventure reality show it was to follow eight sports stars who would be blindfolded and dropped in the wild the show was canceled after the tragic accident well i hope so there was probably no one left <laughs> that's awful they but killed, it's... like literally all eight of the famous athletes in france oh my god isn't that wild? that is awful and see we've never heard of these stories because they don't want people knowing that reality television is dangerous of course not um, during the 2013 season of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, more than 100 ticks were removed from <gasps> the celebrities. Why? Where were they outside? I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Don't you remember that? No. They dropped celebs in the middle of like, the jungle. Holy shit. And then it's like, how long could they last? Like Spencer Pratt and Heidi Montag. Oh. And it's like, they like have to stay in the wilderness as long as possible. Holy shit. Until they're like, I'm a celebrity. Get, Get me, me out, out of here. here. Oh, until they pull that card. And okay. this last one is just wild. Storage Wars star Daryl Sheets revealed during the series special Unlocked that he once found a corpse wrapped <gasps> in plastic inside a locker that he bought back in 1988. According to Sheets, the police had told him a man had murdered his wife and left her in the unit. First of all, no one no one ever found it. It was since in there's fucking 1980. They don't track women like they used to. They have never have. No. Zach, spoiler alert. Woman but they don't care. Missing? Oh, my God. Those storage war ones could not be more staged. Like Oh, like they know what's in them already? Yes, they literally put the box together outside the set, and then they just drop it no. in there. No. Yes. That's so, a bummer. And you know what else is like that? Pawn stars. They ask people, they go like, oh, do you guys have any cool items in your house? Come tell us how you got it and found it. And then it just happened. And we'll film your story about it. Oh, man. <laughs> See, I would I would actually Jack love. Jack fucking loved Pawn Stars. <laughs> He's so well, loved. No, this is a crazy thing. Like, you wouldn't think they need to stage that show. Uh, you would think, but the the casting, like, that would be such a nightmare. Trying to, like, find that gold all the time, literally. Okay, but, like, Okay, so then what is Real? a reality TV show? 
are there any reality TV like okay um the ba- the cooking ones like, oh, okay the Bake great off. British Bake Off the only true pure reality show right yeah that's that, that's got to be but uh, so many other things like producers have their grubby little hands all over yeah. the narrative yeah I think I, I think it goes back down to like competition reality shows even to an extent like the Squid Games one you saw all the backlash from contestants like to a degree of course it's going to be written a certain way but I do think we have hope in that the Great British Bake Off will stay pure. Stay pure. If any fucking drama comes from that, I don't want to know. Don't send it to us. Unless it's like the old lady has been murdering people. <laughs> I would be so <laughs> open to that. Honestly, fine. That's the only example I'll take. Yeah. Um, Zach. What? That was a good episode. It was fun, right? Yeah, I feel like we could have done a, like a lot longer on that. Just like the horrors of... Yeah. But it was I'm a little sorry. sad. <laughs> probably best we didn't for our mental health and yours listeners yeah. you still can get tiki yes come see us live New february York City, february 6th philly, philly february, february 7th. 7th what a great early valentine's day present to yourself or your bestie come with a pal it's at a winery for fuck's sake come on come have fun with us yeah um you can get tickets at confidentlyinsecure.com and we will see you next week bye, bye.